Right. Uh, right, here's what I've done. Uh, so if I still seem a bit exasperated, it's because I've been having uh, technical problems not related to Blockhead, just computer stuff. Um, okay. Uh, right. Um, the current build of Blockhead, this is what resizing a block does. Now I've added this button, which you could, you could toggle this on and off with Q, or just click the button. Um, and this happens instead. Um, so this is like partially implemented right now, uh, not fully implemented. Um, I will get into why that is. <laughs> um, so what this is doing is it's not moving the envelope points. Um, or the warp markers or anything. It's not warp moving this automation data. What it's doing is applying a scaling factor to the entire block. So these envelope points are all at exactly the same coordinates. So there's, it's not a lossy operation to like move, to squish, squash them down and then stretch them back. Um, because we're basically condensing the resolution of this block into a smaller space. That's what's happening. Um, Okay, so I implemented that, um, and I got that all working, and then sort of deliberately broke things while. Uh, uh, yeah, how do I, how do I explain this journey I've been on? <laughs> uh, all the problems I've been having—they're not problems; they're uh, discoveries and findings that I've made. Because uh, like. When I was when I was first talking about the, uh, implementing this this squashing behavior, I said at the time that um, I wasn't sure of exactly what the ramifications would be of adding this and implementing it in the way that I want to implement it. And it turns out after a few days of working on this that it's fucking bonkers. <laughs> it's crazy how complex things get and. Um, this is a pretty common thing that happens with Blocker when I implement things is I'll implement it and then I'll remember that macros exist and I'll like be like, oh, how does this work for macros? And um, that's where it gets really bonkers um, and technically challenging. But I think I know, I understand what I have to do now because uh, okay, I'll show you what I've done for macros. <laughs> um, so far, this is incorrect. What I've done for macros so far is incorrect. Um, I thought it was a correct. I thought it might have been right at the time, um, but I've since realised that this is wrong. So, if I create a ma macro of this, this is how it sounds. Um, so, squashing this macro down is going to also squash the content which might be what you want and might not not necessarily be what you want. For example, if you've got like, if this is like a drum loop or something, you probably want the content of the internal blocks to not be squashed, but for the blocks to just be truncated within the macro. And that's what, that's how the squashing would work. But uh, there should be no option for both, like being able to squash the entire content like this is also nice. Um, right, and uh, then if you have, for example, another macro inside the macro, um, how's this gonna work? So, does this make sense so far? But then when I open this macro, look what happens. This is the original scaling of the macro because this macro block does not have any, any scaling applied to it. But within the context of this parent macro, this macro has scaling applied to it. And so from, from this context, this is how the macro sounds. But in this context, this is the original macro because um, don't forget, like, just as a primer, like, you, 
uh, not a primer, that's the wrong word, but a refresher. This macro block, you can create a clone of this macro block. So I have two instances of the same macro block now, one over here and then one that exists inside this macro. So it's the same macro, but in two different contexts now. Um, so that's why that's happening. So, okay, and now, now I'll try to explain what, so the other mode of squashing a macro would be one where rather than the content of each block being also squashed, when you, when you squash the macro down, it would instead just, um, the mouse input doesn't work properly in this uh, squashed macro, by the way, because I haven't, uh, like I said, this is like half implemented. Um, but when you squash the parent macro, this would instead just truncate uh, rather than squashing the actual content. So the way that's going to work is if you have this like special macro squashing mode where it should not squash the contents, but truncate the contents instead, What's going to work? It, what's going to happen is, I apply a scaling to this macro, but I also apply um, the inverse scaling, which is what will be applied to the content. And so the end result, um, after like squashing this macro down in that special mode, would be if you like to half, if you were to like squash it down to half the size, for example, this would, this would. Um, get squashed down to half the size, but then this, um, this, uh, the scaling to the content would be applied. So it would end up like this basically. Um, anyway, um, what I realized, so I've, I went back and forth between like have very long stretches of coding and then having very long stretches of sitting away from the computer and thinking and uh what i've realized in the end is the way that i've implemented things so far this is not a full implementation yet obviously you can see things are slightly broken um but i realized what i'm doing right now is not actually correct and what i should be doing instead is uh is this going to crash i think it's no it's fine okay um okay again macro primer or blockhead primer, uh, uh, not primer. Why do I keep saying that? Refresher. Uh, the size of a block is part of the block state. So I have two instances of the same block here. Um, and the size is tied to the block, not the block instance. For scaling, like when I do this, uh, I think I've realized now that the scaling should be part of the block instance state rather than the block state. So, so, um, when you, when you have two instances of, of the same block and you do a squash operation on this one, like I'm dragging the right hand edge of this instance, I'm not touching this one. Then what this should do is, um, just apply the scaling to the, this, block instance on the left, and this one should have the original scaling. Um, the reason for that is um, uh, because it makes, it just makes macros, um, I think, make a lot more sense than what I'm doing now. Um, it makes cloned macros make more sense. So we wouldn't have that problem of um, uh, like when you have a macro and then a mac another macro inside the macro. If I squash this macro down to half and then open this nested macro, um, we pop out into this other dimension where we're looking at the original macro because this is not how do I explain this when you create a clone of a macro 
you can enter the macro from two different locations, right? Um, but you're entering the same macro regardless of where you enter it from. It's the same macro. It's not different macro. Even though when you when you open it from here, the view sort of shifts so that it opens from the location that you opened it in the parent context. And same here. It's just sort of an illusion that I'm that you're opening opening this macro or this macro. It's the same macro. You're just popping into this ultimate di alternate dimension where this workspace mac this macro's workspace is at the top of your view. Um, and so that's the reason why if you open a nested macro and it's been squashed down, when you open this macro from here, from this context, you don't have the scaling anymore because this macro doesn't have any scaling. This macro is still at like the original scaling. And that's why you, when, you, when you open the macro, you see the original scaling. But you, when, when you look down on the macro from this context, because this macro has scaling applied to it, um, the macro is smaller than it actually is. Right, uh, so what I want to do is I want scaling to be a per block instance. And then when you open a macro, we're going to take note of the context from where the macro was opened. Um, first of all, we need some UI, maybe in the bottom right here of a macro workspace, just saying what the current scaling is that you're working at. And um, and the name of the block instance that you're um, that you're so it's when you're when you're inside a macro, I want to make it so that you're looking at the macro and working with the macro through a particular lens, um, depending on the specific instance of the macro that you want to look at the macro through. Does that make sense? I, I'm trying to be careful with my words here because I'm. It's easy to say things that are misleading, but I'm. We, <sighs> I want to be able to when you're looking when you're working on a macro, there needs to be some way in the interface to first of all show the scaling that you're working at. Either you'll be working at the original scaling of the macro, which should always be one, um, or if you have like a, an instance of the macro which is squashed down to half the half the size, the scaling would be two or zero point five or whatever. Um, so it's say like 0 0.5 in the corner and it will show you what instance context you're working on. You'll, it'll show you what instance you're looking at the macro from. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I'm bad with words. Anyway, I think that would be good. I think, um, I think it would be really cool if I implement it that way. It will be better than what I've done so far. So I think I'll just get on with it now. <sighs> All right. I've had. I think four cups of coffee and I still don't feel awake for some reason. Yesterday I had a really good day yesterday and I, I, uh, I did got loads of work done yesterday and then I thought I had a pretty good sleep last night, but for some reason I just felt tired all day. Uh, so So, um, yeah, so you can see block scale. 
So instead of being part of the block state, it's now going to be part of the block instance state. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, macro block. So macro block instances are going to have Oh yeah, the other um, the other reason why um, making the scale part of the instant state. No, forget. I'm I'm, aban I'm abandoning that train of thought because that's going to be too complicated to explain. Um, I've missed out a bunch of details because it's literally too compl complex to explain. But I think I've I've communicated the basics of this issue. <laughs> uh, right, so there's going to be this content scale, micro block instance scale, content scaling, which is going to be applied to a macro anytime you squash a macro in that special mac in that special macro squashing mode. Um, Where uh, where the, the content of the macro shouldn't be squashed. The way it's going to be implemented, I think this is going to work. Um, is it, the content actually is going to be squashed? But then I'm going to apply an inverse an inversion of the squash um, by however much amount to the actual content of the blocks. And when it comes to nested macro blocks, the inversion would be propagated into the scale of the nested macro. Makes sense, I think. Oh yeah, the other complication, uh, I can see it right here, is uh, every macro block has a the thumbnail at the front of it. Um, just open the old one. Certificate and macro. This uh, this thing with the colored blocks here that rep sort of represents the inside of the macro. That's a thumbnail, and that is a. I think it's like a five hundred pixel wide image, which is just stretched depending on the zoom level and. Uh, um, it's just stretched, right? Um, So if this is a if this exists inside another macro, if I was to then squash this macro down in my special squashing mode, which is supposed to like um, result in a truncation of the internal blocks rather than the squashing, then let's say this was squashed down to about half, this internal macro should end up like that. Um, in this case, that works fine because the macro thumbnail being part of the block state works fine. But um, we're going to have, it's going to be possible to create clones of the same macro block in different contexts, in like squashed and unsquashed contexts. And so this thumbnail that we're generating, we can't use the same thumbnail for every instance of that macro block anymore. Um, so there's two ways to deal with that. I can either create a, a separate thumbnail for every instance of the macro block, uh, which I don't really want to do, or I can generate the thumbnail differently and then present it differently. So at the moment, the way the thumbnail is generated is I generate pixels from here to here, scale to whatever it is, 500 pixels. 
um, I'll just generate this image. Um, instead, what we should do, if if this, if we end up with this being truncated or whatever, um, if if like what well, one instance of the macro is truncated and in another instance it isn't, um, basically the thumbnail that we need to generate is going to need to go from the leftmost edge of the block the left edge of the leftmost block to the right edge of the rightmost block and then depending when it comes to presenting it on the block on the macro block instance depending on the uh the scale the content scaling and the parent macro scaling um we will apply <laughs> We would figure it out. We we we'll figure out how to present the thumbnail on the actual front of the image, um, front of the block. Uh, yeah, should be fine. So basically, there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do. Yes, thumbnails are going to have to be different. Okay. Micro block instance. Block instance. Okay. So this goes here now. I guess we'll call it BRF just to be consistent. Um, and we also need a new type of thing. Oh yeah. That should be fine. Um Okay.
search to the code base for block scale just do a quick rename here I don't want to do a find and replace here because I want to actually see what I'm changing at uh, now. So yeah. Uh, yes. How was this compiling? <laughs> this shouldn't have been compiling. So this doesn't... about these conversions now. It was nice of Visual Studio to not recompile this file despite the fact that the uh, dependencies changed I think about 12 hours ago. <laughs> I haven't done a clean build since. F index. Yeah, current graph ID. So do I need this block ID? Yes, okay. Um, <clears throat> Oh wait, I wanted to do another... Not that, this one.
By the way, I'm, there's no way I'm going to um, finish what I'm working on here in a single video. So I don't know in like, I don't know why people watch these videos, but if you're watching it in the hope that there will be like a beginning, middle and an end uh, where I introduce a problem and then solve it, uh, it's not going to happen. <laughs> It's, it's going to take at least a few days, I think, to get this done. <coughs> um, right, this is different now. Oh, ah, I didn't think of that. Okay. Um, now that it's instance state rather than block state. How do I deal with that? Like this. Easy. Not difficult at all. Hello? ID, get calls. I don't know what the problem is here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Right. This is now core state. <clears throat> ah, now I don't think I actually need to do anything here. Because this was one of my early experiments with implementing the squashing. And I realise it's not necessary. So let me just have a think. Let me have a think here. All I need to do is... Yeah, it's really easy now. Let me get rid of all this shit now. My parent scaling. Do not need to do this anymore. Which I'm happy about because it's a bit eek. Go back to where I was. Right. <laughs> Yeah, this is the audio state now, so get in here, scale. Oh, and I added this as well, which is not going to be needed. Okay, so we add scale here, and then content scale is going to be part of the macro core state. Okay. I think that's fine. What are you complaining about? It's just Visual Studio being bad. Okay. Let's go back to here. Now what the hell happens here? 
this is my quicker update workspace skill and because of the regenerate core edges. No, that's not necessary anymore, right? I do not need to do any of this. I literally just don't have to do any of this. But all I need to do is this. Which is really nice. It vastly simplifies this crap that I was trying to do before. <clears throat> so the way that the uh, squashing is implemented in the on well, the audio side of things uh, actually ends up being pretty simple. It's just that it's just um, I'm just uh, manipulating the the playhead essentially. Um, like when the when the when the audio callback enters a macro, it will look at the, the scaling for that macro and multiply. It does like a transformation for the the playback position. Um, it's pretty simple actually. So it's just sort of it's it's playing through the song faster or slower depending on the scaling. Um, but then it is going to get a little bit more complicated once I add the, the special macro squashing mode. What's happening here? Do I need to truncate? Do I need to do this? Micro scale. Is this actually necessary? I added this for a reason. Did this end up actually being necessary at all? Is it necessary? I mean, it's necessary to truncate, but is it? Does the scaling actually matter? Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Blah, blah, blah. Uh. <sighs> I think it is necessary to do this. Um, yes. Okay. Barnets. Okay. Get back here. What's happening here? Oh, geometry. Okay. So presenting the blocks on the screen is a whole other thing that needs to be sorted out. Uh, it was only sort of half finished uh, before, which is why when I was trying to demonstrate things, the mouse input was like slightly off when I was inside a squashed macro. <coughs> um, okay, what's happening here? Okay. Yeah, this is going to have to happen differently. Yeah, this is going to have happen differently. Okay. So for now, I'm not going to apply any scaling to the inside of a macro visually, but that will come later. Uh, so I'll just, I think I'll just get rid of this for now. Because the scaling is not part of the block, macro block anymore, so we, we don't have access to it here. 
Yes. So the current scaling of the scaling of the currently viewed macro is going to be something that we pass into this system. It's not something that we can query for. Um, so I'll just get rid of this. Get rid of this scale. Get rid of this. Well, I'll leave that in. Let's just pass this. That's fine for now. <coughs> I think for the first implementation, I just won't do any, any like visual on the screen UI scaling. Um, I will just get the audio working first. Uh, what is happening here? Ah, okay. Content scale, right. Oh, no. Okay, can I pass this, the content scale in here? That's what I'm supposed to do, right? I have to. Okay, that's... Okay, right. <laughs> so this content scale is going to be passed in. to these functions, like this. So I'm going to have to do the same thing. Okay, this is all fine. It's all fine. Stop panicking. It's not a problem. This all makes sense, I think. I'm pretty sure this makes sense. Content scale. So this content scale is going to be wait. Is this right? This is wrong. Ah, oh, this is wrong. Okay. Let's see. Let's think a second. Is this fine? No, no, this is fine. Yeah. Yes. This makes perfect sense. I'm 60% sure that this makes perfect sense. did that one already. This one. so easy. What an easy problem to work on. Uh, <laughs> right, oh yeah. Come on! Give up. Slim. Should be in here. Okay, so this is scale. Here. Ah! What just happened? 
Is it trying to build right now? Is that what's going on? No. Don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm running out of disk space. Okay. Should be something in here. Yes, here. Fucking hell. I'm so ready for winter to be over. I, am, I must be running out of disk space. Nope, I got 45 free. So this is just Visual Studio being shit. Let's restart. Why? <laughs> Why can't you update the program database? Hey, VC143, delete. I go again. This is going to have to be different. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So I just get rid of the scaling stuff that I added. So these thumbnails are going to have to be generated in a different way. It should be simple because this is this stuff is pretty simple. Find intersecting plot graphs. With a scale? So this stuff is going to be different now. Hello. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Ah, I, okay. So this will be content scale. Oh, what, wait, how about that? Why am I passing the scale in right now? I don't think it's... I have to check if... No, this is not needed right now. This was part of my experiments, which turned out to be much simpler. So this is not needed. Good, okay. So we do need to propagate this value, but it's going to be called content scale instead. Content, no, no, no. Content. This is not needed, is it? No, again. That was part of my... my experiments yesterday, which didn't... turned out not to make sense. Uh, no, I need this to be like this. Okay. Is right? Hold on. That's not right, is it? Workspace render. Uh, right. Don't need that anymore. Um, Supposed to be like this. 
instead. Wait, well, how does this work? I'll start with in here. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I think this will make sense. Now this is probably wrong now, I've probably broken things, but it's fine. I'm just trying to get things building right now. Mm. Uh, okay, this stuff is going to be totally different now. Um, mm. This goes up here instead. This is different now. This is very different now. Instance data. Okay, so I pass in the instance data instead. And the instance data is going to have the scale value. Start scale. This goes here. And I have to initialize that in a complicated way now. It's going to be harder than what I've had to do, I think. Ah, uh, right. So let's go instance. My neighbors are being really loud right now. <sighs> Restore start data. doing? Sounds like my neighbours are just mindlessly hammering something.
Uh, oh, I see what it's doing. Okay. This is the undo redo stuff. So this should go down here instead. And it put, instead of passing in the location. Oh, where's the. Okay. Alright, instance data. Oops. Uh, slowly make block data so this is now part of something else <coughs> make block data is there such a thing as a make block instance I don't think that's it no whoops Uh, right. This is where we have to start thinking, unfortunately. Oh, I see. So I should do this like consistently when I'm going like this. data So now I also need this scale is just 
really be passing this in instead of doing that. So I only do it like this, do I? Ah, okay. I understand. I understand. So it's like... Oh, so I do need the input state. Oops. What did I just press? Ah. I don't know what keys I'm pressing right now. I'm trying to copy. Copy to here. Why is it doing that? Because I'm pressing the wrong key. Okay. Uh, data. Oh, I need the size of the the block. I see. So I'm just thinking. Just thinking a second about various things. <sighs> yeah, having this, the the scaling part of the instance state is gonna come. It's gonna make things really weird in some places. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty. Because I'm assuming that the the size of these blocks are always the same between instances, but now they're not going to be. Okay, I'm going to have to Ooh, hmm. Ah, this is okay. This is getting hairy now. Now that I'm connecting more dots in my head. <clears throat> okay, the, the way that I've implemented this so far is uh, You have a block. Maybe it's a sampler block, so it's got a waveform on it like that. Um, when you squash a block down, like for example, you drag the right edge and go squash it to half the size like that. The way it's implemented so far is 
the size of the block is changing and the scaling factor because the size of the block is what's used I mean it's used for all kinds of things but that's what's ultimately used to decide where about where the block is on the screen and to calculate like the left hand pixel and the right hand pixel and, and how to present it it's the size that's used so the way it, that I've implemented squashing so far is resizing a block like that is still doing exactly what it was before in terms of the size of the block but then it's also setting the scaling factor as well and now I'm thinking because the scaling is part of the instance state and not the block state what I should be doing I think is making it so that when you squash a block the size is not actually changed it's just the scaling that's changed and then the scaling is taken into account when we do the calculations to decide where physically the block is on the screen so instead of Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. That should work. Because that's that's basically what I sort of half implemented already for viewing blocks inside of a scaled macro. So I can see that it works already because I already sort of did it. Um, but now it's now that's going to be happening for everything. It's always we're always going to be taking into the block we're always going to be taking the block scaling into account when deciding whereabouts the block is on the screen. We're also gonna need to, we're gonna need to take the scaling into account for all kinds of things. And this also means that now, like the edges of blocks will not necessarily land directly on a pixel at the moment they're always pixel perfect no that's not true no that's not true at all i shouldn't say that they're, they're always um they always line line up directly on a um a song unit is what i call it in, the, in code where the 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 blockhead timeline has like a, a fixed resolution so each one of those increments um the edge of a block will always line up directly on on top on one of those increments uh, but now that's not going to be the case because we're going to apply the scaling to it. And it doesn't, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter at all. Um, I think this is all fine. I think it's all fine. I'll keep going for a little bit uh, with the record recording. Like I said, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be able to finish anything in one video. Uh, but I've been going for an hour already now in this video um, so what do I actually want to do here <sighs> what I want to do is Scaled size. Scale size is going to be the size target divided by the, the current scale. And 
and then we, when we squash an instance down, we're not going to be changing the size anymore. Do I actually need this? I don't need that. No, no, no. I don't need that at all. I don't actually need that. I don't think I do. If I need it, then I need it, and I'll find out that I need it. But for now, I don't think I need it. Uh, okay. Am I doing that? Make block data. Instance data equals make instance data. Same thing that's happening up here. Oh, this code. This code is... Freaking me out. What's happening here? PP three instances just add the data. Uh, yep, yep. Oh. Instance. Okay, this is no good. What I've done here is going to overwrite. <sighs> what did this do before? Okay, now this is fine. This looks fine to me. Because this is the new instance. And these are the existing instances. Okay. Whatever. Of creating new instances. 
Yeah, again, this doesn't really matter because it's not going to be a resize event, but... i do it anyway. Oh, I see what's happening. Yeah, whatever, that's fine. God, that's co <laughs> this code is such a fucking mess, I hate this. Right, what's happening here? Make group position fix size. I think this is right. Oops, I did it wrong thing. Instance data. I might be right, I'm not sure. Uh, make root position for a single sample. This doesn't make any difference. But I guess I will fill it out anyway. Um, save squash start values. to take the data offset into account, do I? Apparently so. I'm not sure how I figured that. To resize squash. Okay. Oh, what? So I do need the size, do I? Why do I need the size? No, no, this is going to be calculated differently. Okay. Uh... This has to be calculated differently now.
Uh, this is a bit awkward. This is a bit weird. Uh, this is weird because we're not going to be modifying the actual size of the block anymore. But we need to pretend like we are. Because that's how we calculate the scaling amount. Um, right. I understand. I understand. New size. Ah, fuck. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, everything changes when I, when I, d ah, ah, okay. It's not a big deal. Oh, shit. I don't think it's a big deal. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Um. So I do need the the size. It's going to be really weird. I'm going to be manipulating like a virtual size for the block instance, which I don't then push onto a data model, but I just use it for calculating the scaling. I think that's, I think that's what's going on here. So out scale is instance state squash start divided by the diff. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. This I think this does make sense. I think it makes sense. Instance data. Right. Root position. So root instance data scale. Root plot data root instance data. Same thing here.
same thing here. Alright, I'm slowly making progress. I'm going to stop the recording. Well, okay, something else happened. I think I'll stop the recording here. In this, this is very... S uh, this is a bunch of boilerplate that I have to change. Okay. Um, Alright, bye-bye.